Once again, welcome today to our Filter Queen Royal Family grand event here today. We're so delighted and appreciate the fact that each of you made it today for this special event. It's a day that you will see in a short while of a joy and excitement, as you will see, see shortly. We're going live right now with the distribution network in all 42 countries in the world. We went on a YouTube, they dialed in, so people around the world can see right now what's happening in, this, in our headquarters here. We had this weekend a sellathon. It's called the Star Search, but it's dedicated to our passing of our ambassador, Mr. Chuck Ellens. Okay? Give Chuck a round of applause. <laughs> Chuck would be here every day at the sellathon, answering the phones, talking to the distributors, calling them up for the extra sales that we needed to get, and, and, uh, and, and just being a huge part of what we did here. He had 56 years of service to Healthmore and Filter Queen. It's a long time. A very long time. So we're going to honor Chuck, and we're going to extend the sellathon one extra day. It usually goes four days. We're going to go a fifth day, and that fifth day for our distribution network, you can hear us around the world. We're going to be giving out rules tomorrow in, in, by email tomorrow morning, and we're going to give away fifteen hundred dollars in special cash prizes to our specialist on Mon only for the day of Monday. Okay. So uh, tomorrow morning you'll be receiving an email showing and explaining all the rules. But today's the time to start planning for Monday. Ladies and gentlemen, again, it's with great honor and pleasure that I would like to welcome to the podium an individual who has been with Filter Queen for over 38 years. He has more passion and love for the Filter Queen business more than you could ever imagine. Please welcome to the podium our president of Worldwide Sales, Mr. Dan Duggan. Star Search Sellathon. Well, thank you very much for all of you being here today. Around the world, you can't tell, but this, our factory, our world headquarters is filled with 150 plus Filter Queen, dedicated employees, old friends, former employees, distributors, vendors, and uh, just a lot of well-wishers. Some of them were conned into believing that this is my birthday, <laughs> which it is. Thank you. But that's not the reason why we're here today. We're here today to celebrate. And uh, we're going to do that. We lost my friend. And as Chuck would say, the beauty of Filter Queen was you could have the worst day of your life and the best day of your life in the same week. And that's what's happening today. So before we get too far involved today, I want to say thank you to everybody, Kelly and Tim and um, Kim and the whole staff, everybody that's pulled this together. And I hate to start with getting to thank yous, and that's why I'm starting with it, because I'm going to forget anyway. And I'll leave some of you out, and I apologize. And it's not because I don't appreciate you, as Chuck would say. It's just because my uh, brain's been scrambled the last week or so. But I want to thank you all for being here and being a part of this. This is a very special day. It's a very special journey that I've been on. And I want to take a few minutes to take you through a quick timeline. I'm not going to tell you my whole life story because that's not what you came to hear and there's not enough beer in the room for that. <laughs> but my journey did start 38 years ago on June 6, 1978 when I answered an ad in the paper that said driver delivery sales, $8 an hour of a small home appliance. I answered that ad. I lied a little bit because it said you had to have an automobile and I didn't. When I walked into that room, I saw a gentleman by the name of Dale Dillard who had a filter queen just like this in a smoke machine. And in 30 seconds or 10 seconds, whatever it was, all the smoke went out of that machine, out of the air and into that machine. And as an 18 year old kid living with his parents at home, you thought anything that can take smoke out of the air like that is pretty cool. <laughs> then he proceeded to suck up the bullets and the bolts and the cushions. And I said, I get $8 just to demonstrate this. I don't have to sell anything. And he said, absolutely. And I was hooked. When I went home that night to tell my parents that I got a job, most times you'd think your parents would be happy because you went out and looked for a job and B, got a job. Uh, they weren't so happy. They said, couldn't you find a real job? <laughs> and I said, I don't know what this is all about. I said, but that machine is friggin' cool, man. I can do this. 
And so my mom wasn't real happy with it, but my dad said, I'll make you a deal. You can use my car for 30 days. I'll take the bus downtown. And if you earn enough money to buy your own car in 30 days, then stick with it. If not, you're on your way to Michigan State to play soccer and become a lawyer and all those dreams. And I said, fair enough. That was an okay day. The bad day was 30 days from then when I earned $600 to go buy a 1972 Maverick and told him, I'm not going to Michigan State. I'm staying with Filter Queen. So here's mom and dad, proud mom and dad with five boys, and I was always kind of the rebel, and I turned out to be the only one that didn't go to college, and I stayed with Filter Queen. And they did what all parents do, and all people, friends and family that love you, they said, I don't know what you're doing, man. Are you crazy? You, you, you just, and I said, trust me, I'm 18 years old. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> I didn't have a clue what I was doing, but I knew that I loved the product and I loved the people. I got sucked into the Filter Queen family and the spirit very, very quickly. And so I made the decision and I kept going. 1979, about eight months later, I was 19 years old, managing my first off as a branch manager at 19 in Wyandotte, Michigan. And uh, my man Chuck, <laughs> he walks in and he came into my life. And so let me fast forward quickly, because this is a celebration, and I'm going to make it one. It's just been a hard week. From 1979 um, to 1983, Chuck was my mentor to me. His wife, Nan, they adopted me as their, as their second boy with their son, Jeff. And Chuck and I had a lot in common. We had a lot of bonds. And he helped me become a filter queen man. He helped me to learn this business. In 1983, I had an opportunity to become a master distributor and move from Michigan, which was my home, to Denver, Colorado. And Chuck said, that's the biggest mistake you're making. He said, but you know everything at 23. Go do what you got to do, and I'll take care of you. And he did. And three years later, in 1986, Chuck called me and says, I need you back home. We have an opportunity in Filter Queen to build the states of Michigan and Ohio, and I need you. And I said, Chuck, I'll be there. In 1990, Chuck said, I got a position with HMI. A year before, he met a gentleman by the name of Kirk Foley. Kirk took over the Filter Queen business in 88, 89. We met Kirk in Chicago when he first came on. Chuck worked for a year and he was promoted to the president. And he said, Dan, I want you to take my job. At the time, Chuck was a legend already in Filter Queen as the divisional supervisor of the Superior Division, Michigan, Ohio, and Kentucky. He said, kid, I've groomed you all my life for this. I want you to take this job. I said, I don't think I can fill your shoes, but hell, you know me, I'll give it a go. And I did. Two years later, in 1992, Chuck and Kirk called me into the office, downtown Cleveland, and said, Dan, we want you to go to Asia. We want you to go to Japan. Now I said to Chuck, this guy, Kirk, he's lost his mind because me going to Asia is not a good thing. And Chuck said, don't worry, I got your back. Just go do the job and we'll take care of you. 1997, Chuck decided he was gonna retire from Filter Queen. And he didn't really retire from Filter Queen, he never did, but what he did was he went back to his home in Mesick, Michigan, and he built what is known all over the land as Ellen's Corners with his son, Jeff. And they built this into one of the greatest businesses that you've ever wanna see. And he used all the principles of Filter Queen, the friend for life, the handshake, the love, the appreciation, and that's all Chuck ever said to everybody that walked in that store, millions a year, we appreciate you, thank you for being a friend. And that was Chuck. But Chuck didn't go too far. Chuck had more plans for me, and I had more plans for Chuck. Because now I got promoted, and I was the boss. And in 2004, I became the president of Worldwide Sales. And I called Chuck and said, Chuck, you've had seven years putting that business together with your son, Jeff. Time for you to come back and help me and let Jeff fly on his own. And Chuck did that. And he came back to Filter Queen in 2004. In 2006, Kirk Foley came to me and said, Dan, we need to take this company private. And I said, Kirk, I'd be happy to do that because this is my life, it's my passion, it's everything I've ever thought about. But when I'm ready, I need you to sell me this company so I can be in charge. And Chuck was a part of that. He's always been a part of that. Fast forward four more years to 2010, to the day. January 22nd, I just turned 50 years old. Chuck and 60 of my other good friends, we were all in Las Vegas celebrating. After a couple days of partying, Chuck said, come on, I need to have a chat with you. He said, Dan, you're 50 years old. You're halfway through life. I said, Chuck, but the last two days with you guys, I feel like I got six weeks to live. 
I just, he said, no, 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 let's get serious. You're halfway there. What are you going to do the rest of your life? I said, well, Filter Queen's my life. That's our life. That's all we know. That's all we do. He said, you need to buy this company. I said, well, how the hell am I supposed to do that? He said, let's start working on it. And six years ago, we did start working on it. Three years ago, 2013, I met with Kirk Foley, and I said to Kirk, Kirk, it's time for you to sell me this company. And Kirk said, I'd be happy to do that when I think you're ready. And he said, Dan, I think you're ready. And so in 2013, Chuck, as my advisor, my mentor, my hero, my dad, my everything, we put a plan together. And Chuck and I, basically, but Kirk, we put a plan together for us to buy this company. And I said, you know, Kirk, this is a simple thing. We'll have this done in 90 days. And Kirk shook his head and said, it'll be a little longer than that. He knows I don't have any patience, and he knows I think I can do anything. So I said, we'll have it done by March of 2014. March of 2014 came and went. September of 2014 came and went. And I'm not going to get into all the details of why they all came and went, but they did. But in September of 2014, the Thousand Council was in South Africa, and Kirk and I were convinced enough that we had figured this out that he announced that he was ready to retire from Filter Queen and turn this business over to myself. We were convinced that this deal was going to get finished by October of 2014. December 31st, 2014 came and went, and the next year came. And there were some really, really challenging things that happened in this. And a lot of these relationships really helped all of us. They helped Kirk and myself. They helped our families. They helped the love that I passionate have for Filter Queen. But always standing behind me, way out in the distance, but close enough to my heart, was Chuck saying, get it done. 2015, we battled. We ran into some really, really tough timelines. And Chuck said, are you ever going to get this done, or do I got to come and do it for you? And I said, well, right about now, I could use your help. But Chuck was battling some health issues of his own, as a lot of you know, over the last few months. He was going into chemotherapy for prostate cancer. And he, was, he had to do what he had to do to get himself right, learn about the disease, and figure out, make some major decisions of where he wanted to go with his life. But there was one thing on Chuck's mind. Dan, get this done. And so we worked hard, and we did. And on December 31st, at 4 o'clock, Kirk and I, with my advisor, Scott and Scott, my attorneys, we finalized this deal where Kirk resigned as the chairman of Healthmore and sold me the business so that effective January 1, I could realize my dream, Chuck's dream, to be the chairman, CEO, and majority stockholder of Healthmore and Filter Queen. So it is a great day and a long journey, 38 years Chuck and I spent together. So I called Chuck on New Year's Eve and said, buddy, we did it. And I said, Chuck, you've got to be here with me, which is why his chair is here today. And Chuck said, let me go to my doctor. The only day I could do this is on a Friday. I might be able to talk him out of chemo. I'll do the chemo Thursday. I'll drive down. I'll be there with you Friday. We'll celebrate, and, and I'll get home. And I said, Chuck, I'll fly you. I'll pick you up. I'll do whatever. You've got to be here. He didn't call me back over the weekend. He didn't call me back on Monday, which is very unusual. I called him Tuesday, and he said, I went in, and they kept me for four or five days. And he said, Dan, he said, the date has got to be a Friday. And he said, we have a sellathon on the weekend of the 21st and the 22nd. And for those of you that don't know, Chuck Allen started the sellathons in 1991 back in North America, and he loved them. He said, all the guys are going to be here. He said, let's shoot for Friday, January 22nd. Now, I doubt very highly that he remembered that it was my birthday, but knowing Chuck, he knows all. Maybe he did. But that wasn't important. That was the first Friday that he could be here. Last Wednesday, we sent out our announcements about our royal announcement that we're going to make today. And on Thursday and Friday, we sent out an obituary. Unbelievable. So that's why we're here today. So we're going to turn this into a very upbeat thing, because Chuck's smiling at us. He's looking over at us. And one of the greatest things happened today. We had a gentleman who was a great Filter Queen person in our life. Let's go home. I knew that was going to happen, and that's why I got free beer, because all you guys would have got the hell out of here. Now you got to stay for 15 more minutes. So, what were we talking about? That, no, that was the reason for why we chose today. It was January 22nd, 
and so here we are. Everybody in this room here, maybe you've heard some of this, you had to sense it, so I apologize if I was distant the last year or so. I had a lot on my mind. We went through some really challenging times. Kirk had a lot on his mind. Um, we weren't probably the same filter queen people that you know of, but everything we did was in the right intentions, and it was to get this ship righted. For the first time ever in the history of our industry, and potentially direct sales, a kid that was 18 years old that started knocking on doors selling a product has worked his way up to own the company. And that is a great American success story, but more importantly, it's a great message for those of the young people that are out there today that want to get into direct sales, because this is the greatest business in the world. And so a lot of you have a lot of questions, and I understand that, and I'm not here to answer them all today. But let me answer some of the questions before they get asked. What does this mean? It means for our vendors, I thank all of you that are here and the people that are watching it and the people that aren't even here because you've stayed with us through some very, very difficult years the last 10, 15 years. Some crazy stuff that's gone on in this business that I didn't agree with and some things that I, will never, I promise you will never happen on my watch. We will fix those relationships, but I thank you for staying with us because the future is so bright. For our employees, I can't tell you people how much you mean to this company. Your dedication, your commitment to building this product, you've gone through hell and back many, many times, especially the last 20 years, as we all have, and most of you are still here. And at the end of this tribute, we're gonna have a toast, and you're gonna see people in front of this stage that have got 15 years or more in this company, and it's gonna be about 80% of the room, because you people have stayed with us. For our distribution network, that's watching, and some that's represented here with my good friend Bill Ferguson, Darren Murphy, and Kelly. Um, I, I can't tell you how excited I am. You have direct sales people for the rest of your life, at least your immediate life. That is our goal. First thing I did was renewed our um, agreement with the DSA as the Direct Selling Association. This is the business that we're in. I can promise you that 100% of every dollar that comes into Healthmore will go back into Filter Queen. I have three simple goals that I'll share with you today. I'm not gonna talk about numbers because that's boring and it's all doesn't matter anyway. But the next two years, we're gonna get our house in order and we're gonna do it hopefully quicker than that. We are gonna be a very, very solid financial company and we're gonna be very, very solid in the community. In five years, two years by the way, we'll be 90 years old. And I don't think anybody in the world that's 90 should ever have to rent. <laughs> so we're gonna buy a place. I don't know where, I don't know why, but we're gonna build this royal castle of Filter Queen. I hope within five years to have shovels in the ground to the palace of Filter Queen, because what Chuck said to me back in Las Vegas on my birthday six years ago, he said, Dan, there's less than 20 years left till this company turns 100. You need to be running this. It has to be in the hands of a Filter Queen person. And so that's why you see the theme. We're on course for 100 years. We have 12 years until this company turns 100 years old. I have 12 years to help put this house in order so that when we get to 2028 and Filter Queen and Healthmore is 100 years old, you sitting here today, your families, and everybody that's watching that's represented in the Filter Queen network are in good hands, and that's the goal. One of the things with our distributors that we made very important is that we've said to them over the years, we have one of the highest class of distributors. What's really important is their image, and in the direct sales image around the world today, there's a lot of fly-by-night people. There's a lot of people that don't do things by the book. But if those of you that know us, I don't have to tell you, but we have the highest rating with the Better Business Bureau ever. We have the lowest number of complaints in the direct sales, especially in the floor care industry of anybody out there. And we have a code of conduct that we expect our distributors to live by. And I'm going to tell you now that there's one word that my parents instilled in me that's going to be even harder on everybody, and that's integrity. We are gonna build. We may never be the biggest, but I can promise you that Filter Queen will be the best. We'll have the best distributors, we'll have the most integrity, and we'll build millionaires, whether they're male, female, black, white, yellow, young, old, Asia, European, Indian, North American, makes no difference. The Filter Queen opportunity is alive today in over 40 countries, and we're gonna get it back into 40 to 50 countries, which is good for job security for the people here, it's good for our vendors to know. It's good for our banking partners to know. It's good for everybody to know. We have a plan. I did not buy this company to get rich. I didn't buy it to keep it for my kids. And if anybody's worried, he's gonna turn this over to his daughters. If any of you think that Sydney or Aaron is gonna run Filter Queen, I can't get him to run a Filter Queen. <laughs> so 
You have no worries there. My goal for the next 12 years is to get this company in shape to turn it over to the next generation. I don't know if they're sitting in this room today. I don't know if they're watching this video stream, but my job is to fix it, make it better, and turn it over to the next generation to make this the greatest direct sales company in the history of the world. And to do that, you've got to give back to your community. And I'm really quite proud of the people that are in this room because we've done a, a, a decent job in the community. I think what Tim and Kelly have done with the American Red Cross for a company this size in Cleveland, I bet we donate more pints of blood than anybody in America. They've done a fantastic job. I know that our champion, Loretta Patrick, 15 years ago, brought us our good friend, Mary Jane. And Mary Jane's from the Women's Recovery Center here in Cleveland. And for 15 years, she's allowed us to participate where our employees, the people sitting in here, we have now close to 1,300 children have had Christmas because of the employees at HMI. That's pretty awesome. That started 10 years ago, 15 years ago, 15 years it's been already. And then eight years ago, I introduced you to another charity, the Cure Tay-Sachs Foundation. And Builder Queen adopted this organization. Healthmore adopted it. We've raised a lot of money. Introduced you to a young girl by the name of Dakota Bin in 2007. Her father's here today, who I'll introduce you to for just a minute. And it, this isn't me trying to sell you on this foundation. There's a story here that is going to wrap this whole business around Chuck Ellens. And when I met Ken and Julie in Dakota, I didn't understand what Tay-Sachs was, but I quickly learned it was a neurological degenerative disease that is always fatal in children, which means no person that ever is diagnosed with Tay-Sachs will live. Until a guy like Ken Bin comes along and says, I understand it may take my daughter but we're gonna fix this, we're gonna cure this. So I met with Ken about three months after he started his foundation and said, what can I do? He said, I wanna raise a million dollars. I said, what would a million dollars do? He said, probably not much, but it's a hell of a start and it'll tell people we're serious. I said, well, I'm on board, I'll help you do that. We went to Sherman Williams and we asked him for paint cans. We got a thousand paint cans at Ray and many of you, we came in here and put stickers on and we went and did what I know how to do. We went door to door, we went and got 300 kids in the area to go knock on doors to collect money for Dakota's dream. A girl many of them never met, a disease they couldn't even pronounce, but they knew they were doing something good. Ken hit that goal of the million dollars, I think it was in the first three years. I'm happy to tell you, well, I'm sad to tell you that we lost Dakota, it'll be two years in April, but I'm happy to tell you that Ken hasn't given up the fight, Julie hasn't given up the fight. At the end of December, the Cure Tay-Sachs Foundation out of Ken's basement when nobody ever heard of, doing small fundraising like bake sales, knocking on doors, sports auctions, we were just shy of $4 million. <laughs> and Chuck Ellens would come cruising in my office all the time, and he'd have a coffee can with him. And this coffee can would be full of change. I said, Chuck, what is this? He says, this is for Dakota. I, every night, at the end of the night, I take my change out and I put it in this bucket. And I said, well, that's really nice of you. And I think Ken, over six or seven years, he's probably got about 10 or 15 buckets. It takes a long time to fill a five-gallon. I think Chuck used to go into the store and just get a bunch of coins so he could fill it up. And I said, Chuck, you don't have to do this anymore. You've done enough. And Chuck said, no, you have no idea. I'm not doing this for you. I'm doing this for me. I appreciate the cause. And there isn't anybody that loved people more than Chuck Ellens, and there isn't anybody that loved kids more than Chuck. And when he, I don't think he's ever spent an hour with Dakota but he knew my passion, he knew Ken's passion, he knew we were on the right track. And so Chuck continued to do this and continued to do it. Amazing guy, I said, Chuck, why don't you just write a check like the rest of us? And he said, you know what, Dan? Every single night when I go to bed, whether I have two pennies or four quarters, I put it in that jug and I think of the mission, I think of Dakota. And so, Ken, if you come up here, please. Chuck was last here on December 17th for our Christmas party. Guys, remember when I made a, sent a message to you and said, when you hug somebody, hug them like it's the last time? That was the last time. I went into my office. And there was only one thing allowed to sit in Chuck's chair today, Ken. In my office was the final can for you and your cause. And I'm only going to make one request. 
because this guy is the greatest accountant in the world, and Ken, he'll have this rolled and in the bank by 4.30 if he can. But I'm going to ask Ken to hold this money, and I'd like it to be the $4 million to come from I, I, I will do that. I, I can't tell you how much Bill Queen has meant to us and how much Chuck has meant to us. And the guy doesn't have pennies in his pockets. He has quarters all the time, and this thing weighs like 10 pounds. There's about $400 in every one of these buckets he gave us, and he gave us a lot of buckets. Um, and one of the things I'd like to tell you is, is you guys have had us out to Orlando to help us. You guys, you guys hugged Dakota when many people were afraid of seeing her in her wheelchair and how she looked. And you guys came towards her, and you hugged her, and you loved my family. And I can't tell you how much that meant to us and how much Chuck doing this meant to us. And if I could leave you with one thought, there are people that are really good at their jobs, and there are people that work really hard at their jobs. And then there are people that are really good, work really hard, and have a really big heart. And I will tell you that Filter Queen is in the best hands now, because this guy has a heart bigger than his work ethic, and you guys have seen how many hours he'll work. You guys are in good hands. So I told you this was going to get positive. And there's a couple more things that I have to do, because if you're happy, or you will be happy with where we're going, I got something even more special. There's a lot of thank yous to my family, to Charlene, and my, my daughters, to everybody, my mom, my dad, Tim, everybody that, that's here, that couldn't be here, is here with spirit. And I really thank those people that said, you can't do it, don't do it, we challenge you to do it, like a bunch of idiot lawyers I've dealt with the last two years that said, you're stupid for doing it. And so we just forged on and we did what we have to do. I really do want to thank all the HMI employees today, but I also want to thank all of our HMI employees over the last 88 years, and include many of you that came to share this day with me today. I love you, we think about you, and we thank you very much. And we want to thank all of our Filter Queen people, the people that are watching this that have just started in Filter Queen this weekend that don't know who Chuck Ellens is. I hope you got a little bit of a feeling. I can't do, do it justice, but I hope you, get an, uh, you really get a feel for the opportunity and the direction that this company's going. It is very important to us. And I'd like to thank Kirk Foley, and I'd like to thank Reet Foley. Reet was the first lady of Filter Queen for nearly two decades. And I have to tell you something. I've never met a classier lady and a, and a woman who went through hell and back several times. And if there ever was anyone that could have looked at us and said, I don't want to be anywhere near some of these Filter Queen people, not talking about us, but some others that were involved, she was it. But she realized the good ones are still here, and this company needs to be in your hands. And God bless her for supporting this. It was her blessing when I first said it's a great idea. And I thought she was really crazy because I said, the day I take over this company, that means you got to spend more time with Kirk. <laughs> <laughs> and she gladly does that. And so I thank you, Reed and Kirk. Kirk was a mentor to me. Um, I'm probably the only person in this building that ever argued or disagreed with him. Is that true? <laughs> Kirk was a unique cat, without a doubt. But he was a mentor to many. He had a good passion, a good heart. The only difference between Kirk and I is we come from a little bit different school of business. Kirk was more of a worldly guy that wanted to do a lot of things with a little bit of money. You heard my story. All I know is one thing. That's Filter Queen and straight ahead. And as I told you before, every dollar that comes into this company is going right back in to building a new product, a world-class product, to finding us a world-class home, and it's going into our distribution network in our programs. And so Kirk was very happy to, to do this. He is now watching this probably live from his yacht in the Bahamas. And so we all say, God bless you, Kirk. Good speed. And if I can give you one last piece of advice, please enjoy your kids and your passionate that you have for your grandkids and your wife and your boat in retirement and leave Eric alone and let him do his job. <laughs> And the last people I'd like to thank today are the distribution network, because without them and all over the world, we wouldn't be here today. And fortunately, joining me today are Darren and Kelly Murphy, our number one distributors and filter queen in the world. This will be five years running. You have no idea how important these people are, not only to filter queen, not only did they help keep us in business because they sold so much, but they, their story is similar to mine. They both met selling filter queens. This is all they've known. 25 years ago, they started in this business, and they went through trials and tribulations, and people told them to quit and told them they were stupid, and they fought it off, 
and what they've earned and what they've learned and their relationship together is because of the Chuck Ellens of the world and their mentors and Filter Queen. The products that you have before you, but Filter Queen we know is not just a product, it's a spirit, it's a family, it's a way of life. Darren and Kelly have that way of life. We were skiing last year and Darren sat down and he said, you know what you're doing is so exciting. He said, I wish if there was ever a time that I could be a part of this, I would love to own part of this company. And I shared with Darren an idea that I had, which, by the way, with about 20 lawyers that we've dealt with, this is the only thing they all agreed on, is, Dan, you cannot buy this company with all your distributors. Because my goal was to offer all the shares of the stock to our employees, our distributors, and everybody I know, our vendors, because I know that if you guys buy in, then we're all in the same boat. And the lawyer said, never work. Someday you can do it, but you need to get control. And I told Darren that, and he said, I'm in. Just tell me when. Long story short, we were supposed to close this March of last year, and at the last minute, the bank dropped the ball on us because of something that happened 20 years ago that we had nothing to do with. And I called, and they said, Dan, the deal is over. I looked at Kirk and said, we're done. It's over. I'm not out of here. And Kirk said, well, there's three options here. You can quit and walk away, or number two, you can go get the amount of money that you need from an outside person that you know, or number three, you can find somebody or some people inside Filter Queen to save this deal. I said, well, number one, Reed told me a long time ago, don't ever be a partner with anybody that's outside of the Filter Queen business, and I respect everything she did, so that was out of the question. Number two is I was not going to quit. So I picked up the phone, I called Darren, I said, Darren, I have an opportunity for you. I got to have some money, and I got to have it in about 72 hours, because you don't have a lot of time to think about it. If you do this, you and I will save Filter Queen. If you don't do this, I'm on to something else in my life, and God bless you, and good luck. And that was basically as short and sweet as it was. I said, call me back tomorrow. He called me back 45 minutes later and said, Kelly and I are in. We do this because it's not just because it's our life, but because we have a mission. You're on a mission, and we want to be a part of it, and we want to finish it. So the short story is, ladies and gentlemen, that as much as I love this company, as much as Chuck loved this company, this transaction wouldn't have happened at the 11th hour without Darren and Kelly Murphy. And as a matter of fact, last night, Darren and I signed the final document. And so now, ladies and gentlemen, I would like you to be as excited about this as I am, but I'd like you to welcome my good friend, my partner, and the ambassador of Filter Queen, the only other owner of Filter Queen in the world, Darren and Kelly Murphy. <laughs> you ever hear the expression TGIF? <laughs> Thanks, Dan. Um, it's a big day. Listen, I'm, I'm not going to. I'm not going to take a lot of time, but there there are some things I want to touch on and say. Um, first of all, Andy, uh, where's Andy? We, we accept your challenge in Canada. I'm not going to forget this because I was reminded that I need to do this right away. We're going to extend, okay, our sellathon in honor of Chuck for Monday. We're going to match HMI's bonus in Canada. We're going to keep it rocking. We're going to keep this party going. So I challenge all the other divisionals okay, to do what I'm doing, match the bonus, keep your people motivated on Monday, all right? So that's order of business number one. Number two, <clears throat> Dan, now that you're in charge, we need to do this every Friday at 2 o'clock. <laughs> you're, you're the man. L let me tell you a couple things about Dan just to get started, or I'll, I'll tell you one main, main thing about Dan, and I've known Dan for, you know, probably the first four or five years of my career, we, we, knew, we knew each other's face, and then maybe after that, for the next 10 years, we, we became a little closer. But in the last few years, I've gotten to know Dan very well, as you can imagine. And you know, one of the things that I try to instill, I guess, or, or, or teach to, to people in my organization is you, you want to be the type of leader that when you walk into a room or an office and you know, the, the, the chaos or the, the crisis of the day is afoot, you want your people to look at you and, and kind of breathe that deep sigh of relief and say, you know what, it's going to be okay because she's here or he's here, whoever that leader is. 
and Dan is the embodiment of that idea. Okay, we, we, we are in good hands. We are in good hands. And, you know, whether it's something as simple as figuring out why the cable box didn't activate the TV or things that are much more major, Dan looks at a situation, accepts a challenge, and it's instinctual for Dan to get in front of it and get on the other side of it as quickly as possible. And if you don't know that already, you're, you're going to see that in the coming months. So I just want to say that, that that type of commitment, and I want to thank Dan, and I want to thank Charlene and Aaron and Sydney for the commitment that your family has made to kind of pick up the torch and take us to 2028. I know what you have on the line, and I can tell you that I think I speak for all of us when I say that we really appreciate it. So thanks, Duggins. I'm not big on speech writing, but I took some notes. It's actually on page six of my passport to success. These are, <laughs> these are important. I will say that on page 14 of my passport to success, it says, to Darren, see you at the top, Chuck Allens. Thanks, Chuck. We're there. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll take a little bit of time. I'll tell you a little bit about my story, Kelly's story. Um, you know, I started in this business in, in 1991. Actually, the ad in 1991 was $9 an hour. That was a bad decade. It went up $1 hourly pay. So $9 an hour, which is about what I needed to, to, to get my life back together and, you know, get myself back into college. Uh, there was a lot of things going on at that time. And I remember going to this payphone um, at this grocery store called the IGA. It was on Quinpool Road in Halifax, Nova Scotia. A lot of you may not have ever, ever heard of Halifax, Nova Scotia. So I called and I said, listen, I, uh, I saw your ad and I, I'm interested. I want to come in and, and get interviewed. And the gentleman that answered the phone had a really strong accent. I found out later he's a great guy uh, by the name of Wael Muhammad. He was an Egyptian guy, crazy. And uh, his response was, Okay, I can get you uh, in tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock. I'll give you an interview. So I said, you know, call me a procrastinator. I'm one of those phone calls you never want to receive as a trainer. But I said, uh, the only problem is, I, you know, I kind of need to be working by tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock. I kind of need this job now. So he said, hang on, to his credit, put me on hold. And he came back probably two minutes later. And he said, if you can get here in 15 minutes, you know, I'll give you an interview. So I was there in 15 minutes, took my two best friends with me, and... You know, we applied for the job, and, and, and uh, hey, we got the job. Um, I'll, in fact, the, the very first demonstration that I ever performed of this product was in, on July 31st of 1991. First demo. Love to tell you I sold it. I, I didn't sell it. Um, it took me about two hours to do the demonstration. I was new. It was my first demo. Uh, probably about another hour to actually wrap my mind around the fact that this person was, was not buying the filter queen. And it, 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 it amazed me. And you know, I did sell my second demo, by the way, but the, the first demo sticks with me more than the second, even though I sold the second. And the reason why is because I'm still amazed that, that they didn't buy. I still can't believe it. You know, I've talked to people outside of our industry and we talk about our 25 to 30% closing average, which means that 25 to 30% of the people that we come in contact with buy our product. And I guess that's impressive when you're in a different industry. But the stat that sticks with me is how do 70 to 75% of the people not buy it? And that's what I remember most about my first demonstration. I know there's a lot of people in here today that work over there manufacturing this product. And I can't tell you how big a part you've been in me standing here today by delivering that product every day, putting it together and sending that that tool or that weapon out for me to do battle with and for Kelly to do battle with for 24 years. So I'd like to thank everybody that puts that thing together here. Thank you very much. So this next little chapter, I'm trying to think of a way to say this, probably should have thought of it before without getting in trouble or starting bad habits, but let's just say that in the reception area of that office on 3695 Barrington Street, I met my love of my life, Kelly. And I could probably get into 
two or three hours of stories and, and take that long to tell you how we went from that day to how we arrived here today, but I won't, but Kelly, I love you, and nobody will ever know what it took. But Kelly's a force, Kelly's talented, Kelly kept me here, and pure opportunity, Th this, this opportunity, I don't think it ever would have came about, but even if it did, I certainly would never, ever have been able to take advantage of it and capitalize help if it weren't for Kelly, and she knows that, and she knows why. So thank you, Kelly. So the years went on. We opened some offices. We moved around. Uh, you know, we had fantastic times. You ever, I don't know if you've ever noticed this, but people in our biz, you, you always, the fondest memories are usually of, uh, of the years that you were struggling. I mean, there's just some, some really fun, crazy stuff that, that went on back in those years. But, you know, through it all, I, I think that we all recognize it in, in our business, and I'm sure in, in other businesses too, you kind of, you kind of pull out or you get out or you benefit what you put in. You know, you reap what you sow. There's a hundred different cliches and ways to say it, but you get back what you put in. That's not always a, a daily equation, okay? Certainly not daily. It's not always weekly, monthly. I mean, heck, it's, it's not even an annual thing. I mean, there's, there's been years where you think, gee, I really put a lot in. I'm just not getting it out this year. And, and, and we, we understand that and accept that. But I'll tell you, about 10 years ago or about a decade ago, boy, oh boy, the, the, the scales just started tipping. And I think that we just caught up and received what we put in 10 years ago. And it, it seems like for the last 10 years, we've just been getting and getting and getting and benefiting. I'm not saying we don't work. We work, we work very hard. But I just feel that sometimes the onus is on you to, to understand when it's time to, to, to put back in or give back in. And, and you know, when, when, the, when the call did come and when the situation did present itself, I just felt like you know, just like our friend Chuck, I talked about him earlier uh, in, the, in the video, you just want to leave something a little better than you found it, or in his case, a whole lot better than you found it. And, and that's kind of why I'm here today. And that's why Kelly and I are here today, because it's time for us to reinvest. It's time for us to reinvest ourselves, time for us to reinvest our, our, our efforts and our passion. It's easy. I've been here 24 years, but I feel like I just started. I feel like I just started training. I'm so excited to move forward with Dan under his leadership and the things that we're gonna do. And I'm really looking forward to the next 12 years and beyond. So we're in it, we're here, and I just wanna thank everybody here for being part of it. So thank you very much. There. If I could have uh, my family, come on up here and Kelly, please. No, I, I just want everybody to understand something before we turn this into a real celebration, because it is, is that right now you're looking at 100% of the shareholders of HMI as it is today. We are going to offer opportunity to all of you to qualify as we can for more of you to be owners and investors of this company. And so if you ever have a problem, all you got to do is talk to me if you don't feel comfortable with my answer, you talk to him. And the beautiful part is, somebody says, Dan, you've been in home office so long, you don't know what it's like to be in the field. I say, well, we'll talk to them. They're number one in the world in the field every day. So if you're in Filter Queen right now, or thinking about getting into Filter Queen, or thinking about joining Filter Queen, or thinking about rejoining Filter Queen, the time has never been better, the future's never been brighter, because we understand what it takes to build the biggest, to build the best, and what your interests are. So every single day when there's an 18 year old on his knees at 11 o'clock at night digging dirt in a home, whether it's in Sapporo, Japan, Seoul, Korea, or in Saudi Arabia, I can feel what that means. And when I get the call from a distributor that said that dealer, that associate, that specialist checked in their gear because the wand broke, I know what that means. And so for the first time in your life, as I said, you have 100% shareholders 
that have owned, operated, knocked on doors selling filter queens. We have your best interest at heart. So I'd like to have a toast right now. And before we do this, I want to tell you about the glasses you're all holding. The glasses you're all holding, and this is just something special, because Chuck drove me with my meeting in Las Vegas six years ago today when he said, Dan, your challenge is to be in charge of this company when the company turns 100 years old. So we're on our journey to 100, and these glasses all say the journey to 100, 1928 to 2028. And if you look at the bottom of your glass, you'll see a number, and you'll see a message that says, redeem this at the Healthmore 2028 convention for $100. So those of you that decide you want to stay with us and be a part of us for the next 12 years, when you see Darren or I at the convention, all you got to do is come up and give us a toast with this glass, and we'll pull out a $100 bill like Chuck would do and hand it to you right on the spot. Now, some of you will say, $100 over 12 years, that's not such a good return on investment. <laughs> and others of you, Jamal, will be saying, give me those glasses. <laughs> He's going to be collecting glasses when people leave the company. It doesn't work that way. Everybody gets one. The purpose of the glass is the symbolic, wherever you put it. If you work here and you want to put it in your locker, do it delicately so it doesn't break. If you put it at your workstation, good for you, as long as that is okay with OSHA and all the other requirements. Those of you that have offices, put it on the desk. Those of you that don't, take it home and put it on a dresser someplace in your home. Because the goal is very simple. I want each of you thinking about our 12-year journey, because we can't get there on our own. We have to be there together. And in 2028, those of you that know us, it will be the biggest party you've ever seen in your life. And all you have to do is be loyal, be honorable, be filter queen person, and represent everything that Chuck has instilled in me for 38 years, and be a filter queen person in spirit and in heart and in body. So if I could have the rest of my key people up here, Ross, Andy, Ted, Dominic, Dave, John, come on guys, Mike, we read your names earlier. I don't want to forget anybody. These are the guys who have been through hell and back with me for the past 20 years. And these guys are still here. I would also like at this point, everybody that has a relationship with Healthmore for 15 years or more to please come up here and grace the front of the stage with your glass, please. If you've worked at Healthmore, been a vendor, you have any relationship, you've known us for 15 years, please bring your glass up here. Don't drink yet. Oh, Sydney's out there drinking. Aaron's drinking. Come on, guys. Come on up. We got two minutes left in our live feed, and then we're going to turn it off and have a real good time. We don't want to void our code of conduct. Spread out all the way across, if you would, please. All the way across. Come on. And I want everybody around the world just to have a peek. This is a very, very small portion of the people that have been our partners in one way, shape. Gino, come on up here for crying out loud. What? Gino's been with us forever, made every trophy and thing that we've ever given away in our life. You people have stood by our side through thick and thin, through Kirk's regime, and even before that. And we're really counting on you all. Do me a favor. I'm asking for one commitment. Stay with us for at least 12 more years. Be with us all, God willing. So in 2028, when we get to Chuck's journey, when we complete that level, it's not the end, but that's the next level, so that we can turn this company over to the next people that are going to run Filter Queen for the next 100 years. I'd like to raise a glass to my good friend Chuck, to my mentor, my leader, and to all of you here and viewing it that love Filter Queen, have a passion for Filter Queen. God bless you all. We are beginning the journey to 2028, and we couldn't do it without each and every one of you. Thank you very much, and cheers. cheers. Dave, you got some music? Cheers, Dave.